Wow, those are really terrible warts and blemishes, huh? It's like you've become a witch at this point, Mom. My son said as he looked at my face. Then, my husband muttered under his breath. The witch of warts and blemishes. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Good naming, Dad. My son burst into laughter while enjoying his evening beer. Don't show your ugly face on my big day. The witch of words and blemishes. Don't come to my wedding. Got it? My own son labeled me as a witch. I couldn't find any words to express my sadness anymore. My name is Sarah, 56 years old. My husband is Nicholas, 57 years old. We live together with our son Matt, who is 28 years old. My son recently got engaged. His partner is Jenny, who works at the same company. Lately, I've been reminiscing a lot about our old family life. We used to be a close-knit family. We often went on trips and shopping together. I remember my son looking back and waving his hand during school events. I remember my husband holding my hand while climbing mountains. Everything was sparkling with beautiful memories. That's why I've worked hard until now. I took care of household chores while working outside to support my kind husband and son. Although my husband didn't earn much, my son expressed his desire to attend a private school. I helped out a nearby firm in the morning and worked at the farmer's market until the evening. I worked hard for the sake of my family. It was a job where I exposed my entire body to the sun from the morning. My son successfully entered the desired school and even got into a prestigious university. I was happy about my son's achievements, but the damage to my own skin was significant. Finally, my son became a working professional, and I returned to being a housewife. One day, an incident occurred that completely changed the attitude of my husband and son. It happened so suddenly. Huh? What's that? One day, as I preparing breakfast, my son suddenly let out a horrified voice. Huh? What's wrong, Matt? I looked around the table, thinking that maybe there was a bug. Then, when he said, No, it's not on the table. It's on your face, Mom. What? Is there something on my face? I wondered if I accidentally got something on my face while cooking. As I touched my face, thinking about it, Matt said, It won't come off, right? It's a blemish, isn't it? Then my husband lifted his face from the newspaper and stared at me. Ha! Ah, <laughs> you're right, Matt. Come to think of it, you also have words on your neck. It's disgusting, my husband said in a low voice filled with malice and I silently stared at him. I will never forget the twisted expressions they both directed at me at that moment. From that day on, they continued to bully me, perhaps getting carried away. Ah, uh, once I discovered it, I can't ignore them anymore. It's like a fraud, right? You used to be beautiful when you were younger. Yeah, mom. I remember when I was a kid, you were beautiful. I used to be happy when you come to my school events. Because you were beautiful. Yeah, that's right. That's why I helped you with various things and carried your stuff. It's really such a drastic change. It's nothing but a fraud, isn't it, son? They continued to make these remarks, escalating their bullying towards me. It became so hurtful to hear these words every night that my mental state suffered and I ended up staying at home most of the time, except for work. Even on days when I didn't go out, I started putting on makeup. My husband continued to insult me, calling it a fraud, while my son further escalated the situation. 
How did it even get this bad? They look so awful. Mom, at this point, you're practically a witch. My son said as he looked at my face. Then my husband muttered under his breath. The witch of words and blemishes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good naming, Dad. My son burst out laughing while enjoying his evening beer. And so, my nickname became the Witch of Warts and Blemishes. I was no longer addressed by my name or even as mom. Even for family members, it was too cruel. That's not a very nice way to address me, you know. I resisted and tried to say something back in a weak voice. Huh? But it's the truth. Huh. They burst into laughter and I couldn't get through to them. Bothered by it, I decided to visit the dermatologist. It's likely caused by years of excessive sun exposure due to your work. But as you age, everyone can develop warts and blemishes. That's what the doctor told me. And that was the end of it. If it's just a result of aging, then there's nothing I can do about it. I exposed myself to the sun not for my own sake, but for both of you. With a sense of helplessness, I wet my pillow night after night. Now, amidst all this, my son is about to get married. Even during such a joyful time, our family routine remains unchanged. After thoroughly insulting me, my son proudly boasts in a loud voice. Jenny is known as a beauty, even within the company, you know. I mean, I fell in love with her at first sight. According to my son, his fiancée Jenny is a beautiful woman who was even a homecoming queen. But she has never come to our house for introductions. I can't let the witch meet her. What if it leads to the cancellation of the wedding? That would be a problem. That's why only my husband has met her face to face. Well, she was a stunning person. Oh, by the way, for the wedding, you better not come, okay? Suddenly, my husband made an unbelievable statement. It's disrespectful to show your dirty face on a day like that. Besides, only humans attend weddings. <laughs> You're right, Dad. There's no seat for the witch. Oh, I really want to cut that with her. What kind of handicap is it to have a witch as a family member? <laughs> My husband and son started hurling abusive remarks at me one after another. Because of the words and blemishes. I was denied the opportunity to attend my own son's wedding. I could only bow my head in front of the two of them, who laughed crudely. On the day of the wedding, I found myself alone in a room without my husband or son, looking at myself in the mirror. This tan was the result of my effort to support my family. And yet, to be treated so coldly by my own family. Even the memories of the happiness we once had together were denied. What have I been striving so hard for all this time? Tears welled up in my eyes as I looked at myself in the mirror. At that moment, the phone in the house suddenly rang. When I answered it, it was my husband. Sarah, please come to the venue. I could hear the desperation in my husband's voice. What's going on? You said there's no seat for the witch. I, I, I've arranged something. Please, come right away. My husband's voice, on the verge of tears, echoed through the phone. Without fully understanding the situation, I headed to the venue for the time being. When I opened the door, I saw my husband and son on all fours. The surrounding guests were in an uproar. Confronted with this bizarre scene, I was dumbfounded. 
unable to find the rational explanation. Is this some kind of ritual where the groom and his father kneel before the bride's family? No, no, no way. I quickly changed my mind and called out to my husband. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Sarah. My husband, still on all fours, turned his face towards me and called my name with a sorrowful voice. How long has it been since my husband called my name? It feels like it's been at least 10 years. But before I could dwell on the thought, a woman's voice resounded. So, what's the reason you couldn't bring your wife? The voice belonged to a woman, standing tall and imposing. Oh, well? My husband visibly flinched at her voice. And then he spoke in a small voice. I can't hear you. Say it louder. If it's not a ridiculous reason, let it resound throughout the venue. The woman raised her voice even louder. My husband cried out in a voice on a verge of tears. B because my wife has blemishes on her face. It wouldn't be suitable for a celebratory occasion. Blemishes? You mean because of that? She's not suitable being here today? The woman widened her eyes and angrily retorted. Um... Excuse me? I called out to the woman this time, trying to get her attention. The woman turned towards me and then approached me, grabbing my face with her hands. She was a beautiful woman. <gasps> Startled by her sudden action and fierce demeanor, I let out a small voice. However, the woman quickly turned on her heel and returned to my husband and son, and standing tall again. It's about your wife's blemishes, right? I just saw them now. It's really not a big deal at all. The woman remained in that position and turned her gaze towards the bride standing behind her. Jenny, get a makeup wipe. She demanded the bride to hand over a makeup wipe. Judging by her age, she was probably the bride's mother. Naturally, the bride didn't have a makeup wipe since she was wearing a wedding dress. Feeling sorry, someone nearby who seemed to be a bridesmaid handed a tissue to the bride's mother. She took it and swiftly wiped her cheek with it. Now, take a look. My husband and son lifted her heads. Sorry. We're sorry. We apologize. Both of them bowed down again. On the face of the woman, who appeared to be the bride's mother, there were blemishes even more prominent than mine. Having blemishes is something that can happen to anyone as they age, you know. You are complaining about something like that. It's people like you with low level heads who shouldn't show up. That's what I'm saying. The bride's mother shouted. My husband and son remained crawling on the floor, shrinking ever further. It's true that my Jenny is beautiful. She's my pride and joy. But you know, even Jenny might gain weight after having children. With aging, wrinkles and blemishes might appear, right? And yet, Matt, you abandon even the slightest bit of gratitude towards your mother, who raised you despite her blemishes, didn't you? I can't possibly believe that someone like you would cherish my precious daughter. At that moment, a woman among the attendees stood up after hearing the bride's mother's furious speech. I have blemishes too, you know? Y yeah me too. That's right. It's only natural. You guys are crazy. Elderly women stepped forward one by one, expressing their agreement. The voices of angry women filled the venue, causing a commotion. Simultaneously, memories of the time I had been labeled as a witch and mistreated flashed through my mind. 
thanks to the anger of these women in the venue. My pent-up frustration over the years felt somewhat relieved. The reason I have these blemishes is because I realized I was shouting at the top of my lungs. I think I was half crying, matching the volume of the bride's mother. The accumulation of emotions and pent-up feelings burst out at once, overwhelming my screams and emotions. It's because I supported both of you. I've been working every day, exposed to the sun, to make her a living, to make you happy. I hurled all the accumulated resentment I had towards my crouching husband and son. Then, Jenny spoke in a cold voice, looking down at my son. How pathetic! The bride contemptuously pierced my son with her eyes. His face already a mess from tears and mucus, due to the overwhelming pressure from the surroundings. I thought I couldn't see your mom because she wasn't feeling well, but it turns out it was because of this. You yourself know that the way you've treated your mother all this time is unforgivable, right? And you, Nicholas, is it? Who outright calls blemishes dirty? Seems to be even worse, in my opinion. Well, in the end, it's the same either way. My mother has more blemishes than your mother, you know. But my father says my mother's blemishes are a medal for supporting the family. Suddenly, I looked behind the bride and saw a man who seems to be the bride's father. He was a small man and spoke with a slightly embarrassed smile. Well, it's true, you know. Yeah. I love you, Dad, for being who you are. The bride looked down at my son again and spoke in a harsh tone. Blemishes and marts are not something to be ridiculed. They can be praised. As someone who was raised by my father and mother, I cannot tolerate such remarks. In response to her crystal clear anger, my son once again lowered his head. His head had already been scraped against the floor multiple times, and his forehead had turned red. With her clear voice resonating, she declared, "It's over." I'm glad we haven't submitted the marriage registration yet. Whoa! Wait! It's not like that. My husband and son tried to protest, but Jenny firmly refused. I despise the bad witches in your heads. Well, the reception is now cancelled, but we will now proceed with the meal. After a brief talk from the bride, the MC announced it. A short applaud broke out in the venue, and everyone started returning to their seats. Your seat is also here, so please enjoy the meal. Jenny came over to me. I chose this venue because the food is really delicious. The bride smiled sweetly. I was mesmerized by her beauty and radiance, especially the steak. It's delicious. Tears welled up in my eyes. I said to the bride, "Jenny, thank you. I wish I could have truly become your blood relative." Then the bride's mother came over and laughed together with us. This must be fate. Let's exchange contact information. While enjoying a peaceful meal, I had various conversation with the bride's mother, Abby. My husband and son had disappeared from the venue, as if fleeing. What surprised me at the reception was that Abby seemed to have made the bride's dress. Since I also enjoyed sewing, that unexpected hobby became a bond, and Abby and I remained friends. A few years later, Abby contacted me to inform that Jenny had found a marriage partner. Of course, I divorced my husband. I received a decent amount of compensation, and as for my son, 
Many people from his company attended the wedding. He could no longer stay in the company and left with his father leaving this house. Thanks to that, I am enjoying my life as a single person gracefully. I no longer get ridiculed for being barefaced with blemishes and marks. And the absence of those insults truly brings relief. I realized how much of a source of stress that was, to the point where compensation doesn't seem enough. I can't help but feel responsible for my failure in raising my son. But I doubt I'll ever see him as long as I'm alive. When I am laid to rest, I want to leave these blemishes uncovered. Son, witness my brave final moments and regret when I'm gone. Hey, about Jenny's wedding dress? Huh? Abby, are you planning to make another one? By this time, Abby and I had become close friends. We visited each other's homes, sewed together, and watched movies together. She's once again challenging herself to make a wedding dress. She's truly an active person. I want to make it. But it's tough, and I want your help. <laughs> of course. Jenny is like a daughter to me, so I'm happy to help. Just then, Jenny came over with cookies and tea. We laughed together and enjoyed the cookies. Oh, this tea is delicious, right? They also have an afternoon tea. So, why don't we go to the shop together next time, combining it with wedding planning? I smiled and wrote that plan in my schedule book.